Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on uh, creating an executable jar or basically how to develop a command line tool based on our Java project. And in the previous lecture, we saw that we can use either Eclipse export option and export our Java project as a runnable jar or we can build with Maven and configure the uh, Maven jar plugin and ask it to uh, add the, in the archive, uh, give a manifest and put the main class uh, inside the manifest so that we can run the jar file uh, 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 directly in the terminal, right? However, I mean, running the jar file is not a bad idea, but the problem is that the, the end user has to have some sort of uh, JVM, right? So they have to have Java installed, which is uh, most likely the user already has it installed. But another option is to actually compile the entire Java project into a native executable. And obviously, this means that we have to have a compile it for Windows separately, for Linux separately, for Mac OS separately. But this is uh, basically what the C++ typically does. And uh, there is actually a very nice project out there and it's uh, uh, both uh, freely available as an open source project and also it has a commercial version called Graal VM or Graal Virtual Machine. And it has a binary tool called native image. So native image doesn't come by default with the, with the JDK itself, right? But native image is inside this Graal VM. It's a binary, you give it uh, your Java project, uh, basically, and tell it this is my main class, or you give it a jar file, tell it uh, to compile it to actual executable binary, which you can use it truly as a command line tool, right? So creating native image, we can use Graal VM to convert our Java code into a command line executable binary. Graal VM has the native image tool. You can download it, uh, the community edition, CE edition, community edition from www.graalvm.org slash downloads. And uh, the latest version is 21.1.0. And then, uh, so here it says that based on OpenJDK 8, 11, and 16, I believe 16 is still experimental. So the most, the latest stable version supports uh, Java 11 or, or is from JDK 11. So if you use some of the features uh, from JDK 12 or 13 or 14 or 15, this is not going to be able to handle it because it checks your class files and makes sure that it's either 11 or below, right? So you install Graal VM, you can install the native image binary. I believe it comes by default from it. If you download the source file of Graal VM, I believe it's on GitHub somewhere, then you build it from the source, then you can also build the native image. But once you have the native image binary, you can invoke it on a jar file or on a class file of your Java project. And it can, uh, you also have to tell it the class path of your project and it can compile that class file and also it compiles the entire JVM. It also compiles all the dependencies of that class file which are on the class path, right? So you create a main class in the Java project and that's going to be the class that is, uh, the main method of this class is going to be run when you actually invoke that uh, executable binary after the compilation is done. So reads and passes the command line and we look at this, we said that when we have a main method, it takes an a string array of args, right? And those are the command line tools that are passed to JVM. And when native e image uh, compiles your Java project into a, a command line executable, it knows that those, uh, est those uh, command line arguments are passed as this a string array of args, right? Run native image on the main class. At the moment, Java 8, 11 are fully supported. Java 11 is basically the latest version and we're going to use this. Let's use Java 11 version of Graal VM. If native image is not installed, when you download it for your operating system, Mac OS, Linux, or Windows, uh, first try to install it. And there is a website, graalvm.org slash reference hyphen manual slash native image. So if you go to this address, it tells you all the details that, that you need to know to work with native image. And I'm going to show you uh, an example to see how it works. So what is native image? It's a executable binary, right? 
and uh, from the bin folder of the uh, when you download the Graal VM here I've downloaded it Graal VM Community Edition for JDK 11 and uh, it's very its structure is very similar to the JDK it has the contents home bin includes right JMod these are the modules but it has some extra features in the lib for example it has Graal Graal VM there's a SVM or sub VM sub virtual machine and inside the bin there is a native image and there is an alias or shortcut to this native image also in the bin folder so you can use that shortcut because it's correctly pointing to this executable in the bin folder of the SVM it can compile your executor class which has a main method it can also compile the required JVM modules and GC so it also compiles the garbage collector at the end it can create a native executable binary which is very cool clearly it has some limitations it works great for simple Java applications right let's say we just had a simple uh, time movie timeline parser which takes the text file that has the duration of the clips and then we want to convert them to a start time or end time this is a very simple application and having a native uh, command line tool for that is very cool right currently supports well up to java 11 the final executable binary is much larger than the jar file which makes sense because um, um, it has to include all the jvm and gc so it has to add a lot more but then it at the end it it doesn't require any extra software to run it's a fully executable native binary it does not support swing awt java fx or other gui frameworks from java and the reason is that these these uh, gui frameworks in java they require linkage to the native libraries right so usually they have dynamic libraries that the jvm loads and at the moment native image cannot support uh linking to native dynamic libraries so it's more like aesthetically compiling the entire java so anything dynamic any dynamic loading is not really supported uh, same way Java reflection this kind of stuff are not or class loading at runtime these are not uh, uh, very well supported right so it's better not to use a native image when you are trying to use reflections or dynamic class loading this kind of stuff for our simple Java project native image is a good tool for creating a native execute web so basically the idea here is that developing a Java application is much faster than developing an equivalent C++ application and then one and then the fact that we can then compile it directly to native image it's a, it's a good thing right compilation takes time but maybe the development of the java application uh, can be much faster than this equivalent c plus plus one obviously this doesn't apply in all cases so but for me for example whenever i have a simple java project uh, uh, it makes sense to write it in java and then uh, compile it directly to native image make sure the jar file has a declaration of the main class inside the manifest and we saw that you can do it with either eclipse export or maven use a configure the maven archive plugin or maven jar, jar plugin so how do we set up this native image uh, uh, in eclipse so the U native image is a binary or command line tool that comes from Graal VM and it takes some options and then you can point it to a jar file or a class file that has the main method and then this is the name of the generated uh, binary after the compilation and you can give it options these options can be JVM options or system options right so we know that Eclipse supports a very nice feature called external tool and this external tool basically creates a uh, command line and runs it on your whatever you're selecting right so I go to the external tool create a new tool called native image maven I want to run it with maven so set a name for the external tool in the name and then in the main tab you're going to give it or point it to the executable of the external tool in this case is native image so Java virtual machines, uh, Graal VM, contents home, lib, SVM, bin, native image. And then uh, in the arguments, you're going to pass it uh, the name of the class file, for example. Or if you want to run it on a jar file, you can uh, give it the uh, name of the jar. But here I want to directly run it on a class file of my Java project that has the main method, right? So Java type name returns the fully qualified uh, name of a class file fully qualified name means uh, package.class right and then uh, in order for the uh, command line tool to understand these you have to point the working directory to 
the root of the binary files or the class files. When you run with Maven, the root is workspace, the project name, target folder, and the classes. This is where the binaries are. So set the working directory to where the class files are, and then you give it the fully qual in order to give it the name of the class file, you give it the fully qualified name, which means package.class. And then uh, um, in order for the final executable, I want to name it the name of the Java project, right? This is obviously optional and uh, you can select whatever you want, but here I prefer to name it as the name of the project, right? So the name of the binary, typically the project name. So again, uh, the root of the class files uh, in, uh, if you are using Maven is in the project slash target slash classes. If you're using Eclipse compiler, it's in the bean folder, right? Project slash bean. And then uh, when you run this, it puts the binary in the working directory, working uh, directory, i.e. assumes relative path. You can specify absolute path too. All right, so let's head to Eclipse and try to run this on our uh, simple uh, Java application that we had. So back into Eclipse, this is our Java project, movie timeline, and we said that um, in the movie class, for example, uh, we said that a string args, with the first uh, arg, uh, we assume that it's the name of the file that has the duration of the clips and then the title and then we said that if the user passes another argument we assume that that's the output format for the timestamps and then uh, here we just setting the name and then printing to the console so if i run this uh, it ex uh, complains because i am not passing any string args and then we said that uh, we can export as a jar file right so if I open a terminal here, where the jar file is, uh, java-jar, and this jar is executable. Uh, and then after specifying java-jar and the name of the jar, any argument that comes after that is passed as the command line arguments. And we said that uh, in the resources, for example, I can give the absolute path to this file, right? And we can use single quotes or double quotes and after that, we can uh, specify a format as the second arguments or leave it blank, which then it assumes the start time. So if I run this, it prints to the console by uh, the clips based on the start time, right? So if I select my movie clip here and then uh, go to the external tool configuration, you see that I have configured this uh, native image. Right, this is the binary here. I want to change. So basically, uh, by default, if you point it to the uh, target slash classes, the the uh, after the compilation, the native binary is going to be in the working directory. So I want the working directory. I want the final result of the compilation be put in the target. That's why I'm setting the working directory to target and then give it the name of the class that I want to compile. And then the output binary, I want it to be named as the name of the Java project. But then I manually set the class path. So you can manually give it parameters of, for the class path. Here I'm saying that working workspace project target classes, right? This is where the class path is. And then, um, uh, okay, if I close this. Now what we do here, let's say I want to compile this uh, class into a command line tool. So when I run that command line tool, it actually runs this main method. So I select this and then I run the native image Maven. All right. Uh, so right now the problem here is that uh, it complains that movie timeline has been compiled by a more recent version of the Java runtime, so 59, which means uh, uh, JDK 15. This version of Java runtime uh, recognizes class files up to 55, which is JDK 11, right? So what I need to do, I need to uh, basically change my Java runtime. So I'm going to right click on the JRE and select an alternative JRE and select JVM or Graal VM 11, right? And then now it understands the Graal VM 11. And then in the POM file, I'm going to, uh, I didn't need that, but uh, the main thing here is that to reduce the compiler level to 11, right? Okay, 
and then uh, let's also update the maven project so maven update project okay and then uh, um, what I'm going to do I'm going to clean and recompile so in the build I'm going to say clean compile uh, or clean uh, yeah we can compile so we're going to clean and then uh, recompile with JDK 11 build is successful and obviously I can run again so the run is also working fine for this one we didn't specify any command line but now let's run this again now everything is compiled with the JDK 11 or uh, compiler level is uh, JDK 11 so I can uh, select my movie class and then run the external tool on this so let's see what happens so movie timeline it uh, uh, it finds all the files that it needs to compile right now it's not complaining so it's entered the compilation phase okay all right so uh, set up it's setting up the compilation as you can see obviously compilation takes time right so um, it's good that we can compile to the native image but obviously uh, the development you don't need to basically we don't want to compile each time we want to add some stuff right so you can have a java project evolve it until you're satisfied and now you want to release it you just go ahead and compile it to the native image right so the build is successful and it puts it in the target so if i refresh my target you see it has a text file that tells you what build artifact was created it's called movie timeline and it's a fully executable so if i open uh, in the system explorer as you can see it's a fully executable command line i can run it and right now it throws an exception index zero out of bound but it's a fully functional uh, uh, executable and uh, we can see it if i let's close this uh, and then i'm going to open a terminal right where this is right ls so we have this uh, movie timeline and this is a fully executable and when you have an executable in a folder you have to specify the dot a slash movie timeline and we said that the first argument is the name of the um, uh, the text file so let's copy the path fully qualified path of this text file all right and the second argument is start time for example and as you can see it's able to run it doesn't require any JVM or anything this is a fully compiled native binary and as you can see it works just fine and we can run it again and tell it to print based on the uh, end time for example and as you can see now it prints based on the end time we can do the same thing but uh, instead using the default duration and as you can see now it prints based on the duration so i hope you enjoyed this lecture and now uh, and i hope you really start to using this maybe if you're developing a simple command line application you can consider uh, uh, if it doesn't have uh, like uh, dependencies or it's just a simple project you can always consider using Graal VM to compile it directly to the native image obviously right now you're limited to Java 11 so some of the features of JDK 15 and beyond you still can't use it but the late the uh, more up-to-date versions of the Graal VM are coming soon so uh, you can always check their website so please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one